uh, Dr. Srinivas Rogaru, he is also very well recognized and uh, a noteworthy. and the number of organizations for which he contributes are more than 100 and then he's a reviewer of 17 international journals and six national journals if you see his research uh, profile he has 335 research papers and he has other 27 books and he edited 24 books. He has as many as 8,832 citations. His H index is as high as 46. I10 index is 208. And then this is his profile. While serving as the director of the NAM, in just last one year, 2022 they have a, a program called EA Idea. This is the Technology Business Incubator of ICR NAM. And 98 startups have been supported and 30 startups have been uh, granted and three entrepreneurship programs have been taken. Five FPOs are conducted for uh, roadshows. And the notable among them in the recent August 6th is Agri Wood on Five, a food and agri business accelerator program with the support of NABAD has been launched recently. And thank you, sir, for your contribution to agriculture and ICR. Welcome, sir. Thank you, madam. May I now request Dr. C.H. Suhuvas Rao, chairman of the session, to introduce our chief guest and take over the session. Good morning, everyone, and uh, it's a great pleasure to be here in this important uh, function. Uh, uh, and and see Dr. N. G. P. Rao Memorial Lifetime Achievement Award Ceremony. And uh, 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 distinguished guests, uh, particularly, we are very honored to have our own uh, Professor Ramesh Chanji, 
member uh, Niti Ayog, uh, eminent agriculture scientist, and uh, who really led very, very important policies in the country. And uh, his presence itself is a, a great uh, uh, recognition for uh, the very tall and uh, highly decorated uh, uh, scientist of uh, Dr. N.G.P. Rao sir. Thank you very much, sir. First of all, your uh, gracious presence here for accepting and uh, to travel to Hyderabad and uh, your uh, physical presence really matters for all of us. And uh, I will tell you, in fact, uh, um, also many important personalities have uh, joined. Uh, Dr. Amaravji, uh, former director of NAM, entire uh, uh, Rao uh, and Madam uh, family of uh, NGP Rao sir, and the Honorable former Vice Chancellor Padma Raju sir, my colleague Dr. Minakshi Sundaram, and all colleagues from many ICR institutes, but more than 350 people have joined online. online. And uh, uh, very, very importantly, uh, uh, award winner today, uh, Dr. Nirmala ji. Uh, it's a great pleasure to have you, all of you in this important uh, function. And uh, uh, before introducing uh, uh, our uh, 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 Ramesh Chand ji, uh, I think we are very happy to celebrate uh, uh, this uh, award function of uh, Dr. NGP Rao sir. In fact, uh, today we have been speaking about Milex and the sorghum. The uh, world is speaking about millets and uh, uh, government of India has taken highest priority. And uh, as soon as Dr. Th Thara landed here, and she's, uh, she's the one of the busiest director of ICR with the many, many uh, millet program. I think best to use this opportunity, Dr. Thara, till December to grow her, your institute. And we are all, uh, moreover, uh, is a very opt. Uh, Hyderabad is a diabetic capital, sir. We are all started eating millets, and everybody started eat, eating millets and looking that. So, but the uh, the baseline, the sorghum varieties, uh, were developed by uh, Dr. N. G. P. Rao, sir, and uh, then afterwards he led uh, agriculture scientist recruitment board. It's a great honor uh, that uh, Rao Saab has. Uh, uh, reach to the ASRB chairman, and he must have selected the best people to, uh, to, uh, for ICR organization, his contributions in terms of varieties and overall millet program, and how to pick up best human resources to the country, the immense contribution by Dr. NGP Rao, sir. It's a great pleasure to me, particularly here uh, uh, today, and uh, to introduce Professor Ramesh Chanji. Ramesh Chanji is a well-known uh, agriculture scientist. We all know that his contributions for the last 32 years is a well-known entire country and abroad. And is a very, very decorated agriculture economist who contributed uh, great policies. And he's uh, one of the, uh, I'm very close to Professor Ramesh Chanji. And uh, uh, the one of the policy maker who can articulate openly, despite of all other things, though he's a, a very important position, but some of his deliberations, his expressions are very, very open, and he will take both sides, pros and cons, and uh, a very, very impressive logical presentations he will put. We all know that uh, when Sri Lanka food crisis was there, when they have shifted completely natural organic farming, he was telling presence of honorable agriculture ministers and all other ministers, to what extent we can go to organic farming in India what extent we can go to natural farming. Since India is a food security, secured country, and carefully we can go up to 10% of organic farming. So this message is a big clarity where our policies need to be there, where to expand, what to do, and to what extent we can move to organic farming, natural farming. Similarly, he is very fond of agri startups, agribusiness management, is very, you would like to see Indian agriculture as a business model. And uh, we visited many times to NAM. We have a postgraduate diploma in agribusiness management. We have tech as uh, introduction technology business incubation center across India. We are supporting around 300 startups. In fact, it is now the, uh, uh, we are talking about startup culture, agri startup culture recently last four or five years. 
but Professor Ramesh Chand has been putting these messages, these requirements for the last 15 years, how ag agriculture to be as a business model and how startup culture to be in incorporated and uh, how agri exports can be taken, how wealth creation can be taken from agriculture sector, how job creation can be done from agriculture sector. And he also stresses very often, very important critical aspects of agriculture now is a monsoon research and market research. Monsoon and market research are critically important aspects which Indian farmers are facing from us. These are the most of the since 5, 50 to 60 percent is rain fed agriculture without monsoon research, monsoon management, monsoon adaptation, it is not. Then markets, we all know that how much farmer is getting, how much middleman is getting. So his philosophy, his wisdom has reached to the ground level and many policies have been developed which are helping to the many farmers of India and government and many state governments. It's a pleasure to introduce uh, the formal uh, note, Professor uh, Dr. Ramesh Chand is a member of Niti Aayog in the rank of Union Minister of State, Government of India, Niti Aayog, chaired by the Honorable Prime Minister of India since 2015. He has PhD in Agriculture Economics from Indian Agriculture Research Institute, IRI, New Delhi. He is a fellow of prestigious National Academies, National Academy of Agricultural Sciences, Indian Society of Agriculture Economists. Currently is a member of Finance Commission of India, which determined devaluation of taxes between the union government and the states. Professor Chen has more than 30 years experience in research, teaching in the field of agriculture, economics and the policy. Prior to joining Niti Ayo, he was the director of National Institute of Agriculture, Economics and Policy Research one of the important policy institute of ICAR, ICR, Indian Council of Agriculture Research. In the past, Professor Ramesh Chen has worked in senior academic positions as ICR National Professor, Professor and Head Indian uh, Institute of Economic Growth, Delhi University, and Professor of Punjab Agriculture University, Ludhiana. Professor Ramesh Chen has been visiting professor at University of uh, Velagam, uh, NSW Australia, at the Institute of Developing Economics, Chibashi, Japan. He has also been consultant with the international organizations such as FAO, UNDP, uh, SCAP, UNC, TAD, Commonwealth, and World Bank. Professor Ramesh Chen has chaired important committees on agriculture policy setup by various ministries of government of India. He is a member of board of trustees of CIMIT, it is one of the important CGIR institute. Professor Chen has authored several books and published more than 100 research papers. Professor Chen has been presented Jawaharlal Nehru Young Scientist Award from the beginning to the highest award to Rafi Ahmad Gidwai Award of Indian Council of Agriculture Research. Sir, with this brief introduction, we warmly welcome to you Hyderabad and the Institute of Military Research and particularly to remember the recognized to be grateful to Dr. Uh, NGP Rao sir uh, for his uh, great contributions in terms of millet and sorghum research. Thank you very much. Now, let's have the pleasure of listening to Dr. NGP Rao Memorial Lecture on Millets in Indian Agriculture, Present and Future by Professor Ramesh. Dr. Sirinvasa Rao chairing this uh, function today and also director of uh, NARM, Madam Tara Satyavatiji, director in the Institute of uh, Military Research, Dr. Rama Rao, former director NARM, who has been my friend since a long time, uh, Dr. N.H. Rao, Mrs. Uh, uh, Sarla Rao, uh, Director of ICR Institute, Vice Chancellor uh, Rajuji, and uh, participants, both those who are present in this room and also those who have joined uh, online. Uh, 
Friend, I consider uh, it a privilege to deliver uh, uh, this lecture, Dr. N.G.P. Rao Memorial uh, Lecture uh, today, uh, because I uh, include Dr. N.G.P. Rao in the stalwart to whom I call uh, agriculture scientist of Green Revolution India. So he belonged to the gender of uh, Dr. Swaminathan, Dr. Paul, A.V. Joshi, and M.B. Rao. Um, and we all know um, the kind of role they played in steering India from a very, very difficult uh, situation of famines, uh, food scarce, scarcity, undernutrition, hunger, uh, import dependence to a stage where right now we are exporting at least eight to 10% of our total agriculture production. Um, in fact, uh, uh, some observers on uh, world development consider that uh, India's green revolution of uh, 1960s and 70s was probably the biggest uh, event in the history of uh, mankind. The latest article I just read uh, yesterday by Pulper Vala Krishna, it is in the Hindu. Uh, in this part of country, I think most of the people read uh, the Hindu. So it's a main uh, editorial uh, on, uh, on uh, insecurity, food in insecurity. Uh, and he just mentions that uh, uh, because of influence of USA, world considered landing on the moon by, by man as the biggest uh, uh, event of uh, 60s. But he wrote that, in fact, uh, this Green Revolution of India is a, an event which is much, much bigger than that event. So if you look back at uh, the, that situation, today we are comfortable. Um, and when you are in a comfortable situation, you can't uh, fully appreciate the situation of distress. But uh, I remember that uh, when this food shortage was happening in 65, 66, uh, as a child, I know that uh, on the call given by our prime minister, with great pride, I also joined my parents and other family members in observing fast for one day because India didn't have adequate food. So uh, Dr. N.G.P. Rao belongs to that uh, class of uh, green revolution scientists who helped this country to uh, come uh, out of uh, that uh, uh, difficult uh, situation to a place of pride uh, in uh, uh, food and uh, uh, agriculture sector today. Uh, this was also the reason, in fact, there were two reasons uh, to accept uh, this uh, uh, invitation. Uh, one, of course, uh, reputation of uh, Dr. Uh, uh, NGP uh, Rao. Uh, I never uh, interacted with Dr. N.G.P. Rao, but uh, um, I heard a lot about Dr. N.G.P. Rao from my friend and former colleague, Dr. P.K. Joshi. He used to uh, tell a lot of things and high praise about uh, Dr. N.G.P. Rao. But I saw Dr. N.G.P. Rao through Dr. N.S. Rao, who was my senior in uh, IRI. Uh, he became, I think, uh, uh, S1 scientist in IRI when I was doing PhD there. At a very young age, he got INSA awards. And uh, I really, uh, uh, Rao I never probably mentioned to you that uh, I used to feel inspired uh, by your uh, contribution. In fact, when he decided to come to NAM, uh, I hope you remember, I told him I don't want him to go to, <laughs> go to NAM because he has uh, so much strength in science that I would wish him to remain in hardcore science than uh, going to uh, 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 management institute uh, like uh, NARM. So as you all know that uh, genes travel, and I have seen gene traveling from Dr. N.G.P. Rao to Dr. Uh, uh, N.H. Uh, uh, Rao. So 
uh, another uh, unique uh, aspect of contribution of Dr. M. G. P. Rao that he rose to uh, this fame despite the fact that he worked on disadvantaged crops or, or what I sometimes used to call orphan crops. Uh, in our country, generally we link reputation of scientists with reputation of crop. If crop is doing the great, it's a big crop, large crop like rice, beet, sugarcane, cotton, uh, we feel that the scientists who are working there are also great. But if you consider uh, scientists who are working on safflower, sesame, uh, some uh, moong, marsh, uh, uh, sorghum, and like that, uh, they are not taken very seriously by people. The Dr. Rao, even though he worked on sorghum most of his career, but still he rose to the kind of fame to which uh, many top level people of uh, his uh, uh, generation uh, reached uh, uh, during the uh, 80s, uh, during uh, during 80s and uh, during 90s. The second reason um, which persuaded me to uh, come to uh, this place was that uh, we have created so much, uh, um, I will not say hype, hype is not the right word, uh, so much awareness about uh, uh, millers, uh, not only in India, even abroad, that uh, the world is really expecting that India is going to do some miracle through millers, uh, which will uh, address all problem of nutrition, all problem of health, all problems which are coming from climate change and water scarcity. That kind of uh, impression is getting created. Uh, so I just thought that uh, the scientists who uh, matter uh, for uh, uh, testing credential of India uh, to help India that whatever claim uh, our prime minister and country is making, uh, to what extent we succeed in that, it depends upon scientists who are working in this area and scientists of Indian Institute of Military Research. So I feel that uh, they need to be encouraged because they matter both for future of humanity and also future of planet, if we look at um, the way uh, things are uh, happening around. So I thought um, uh, I will interact with the scientist of this uh, institute. Uh, maybe we will be able to um, um, come with some uh, ideas which can um, help in um, achieving our goal toward uh, uh, this uh, toward uh, toward uh, toward uh, this uh, millets. Uh, you all know that um, uh, we are now um, um, uh, discovering, rather I sometimes uh, lightly used to say, we are reinventing wheel. We knew about nutrition value of all these millets, uh, but we are now reinventing it. Uh, but other than nutrition and health, uh, I think, uh, in my view, that nutrition probably still uh, can be addressed by manipulating in the other kind of uh, uh, food commodities. But the threat of climate change, which necessitated that we have uh, production choices which are uh, uh, resilient, uh, which can uh, uh, bear the rise in uh, climate change, um, which are hardy crops. So uh, there, when we talk about those dimensions, the attention of uh, everyone uh, goes uh, goes uh, toward millers. So with this background, I will uh, just share with you in our next uh, 20, uh, 25 minutes. Uh, the author has asked me to speak on present and uh, future, but I strongly believe that uh, uh, as in um, uh, Mahabharata, there's a shlok that Vivishya ka janam atit ki god se hota hai. So if we do not uh, discuss the past of uh, millers, uh, we may not uh, have uh, uh, important and necessary learnings to prepare a good roadmap uh, for, uh, for millers. So I will briefly talk about uh, uh, past also and uh, present uh, and uh, future of, uh, of uh, uh, 
impulses. Uh, if we look at the past, uh, um, in fact, uh, in case of India, uh, to set the context, I am saying so. Uh, if you look at our food production, we have made very impressive progress. Those of you who you who want to know exact number, I am intentionally not making use of uh, PowerPoint, though I brought it. Uh, then the number of people who have joined online is uh, nearly six times the number of people who are present uh, in this hall. Uh, then I feel that uh, that uh, I should not become invisible. And if I start using the slides and put on the screen, then you become invisible, only the slide uh, is visible to people. So because of that, I'm not uh, using uh, a PowerPoint, but I want to set the context uh, from what I included in the PowerPoint. That context is that India is passing through a perplexing problem or India is facing uh, that effort called enigma. That enigma is that in the midst of plenty, we have sort of uh, uh, issues related to hunger, related to uh, undernutrition, related to child health, anemia, etc. Now, let me share one number with you that if we uh, consider uh, from 51 onward, per capita food production in India, per capita food production has doubled. And the first 50% increase happened in 50 years between 50 and 2000, and next 50% increase happened in just 23 years. So that is the kind of achievement in which subsume uh, all uh, kind of growth in rice, in wheat, and all other crops that uh, at the turn of century, we were producing one kg food per person per day and, uh, and uh, 1.25 kg food per person per day. And today we are producing 1.8 kg food per person per day. Even the composition of this food has changed. It is not that we are consuming only cereal. We are now consuming more uh, fruit and vegetable, more eggs, more milk, more fish, more meat. But despite food composition becoming healthy, quantity of food increasing by 50%, still if you look at uh, statistics, because we do not have our own statistics after 11, 12, to find out what is the percent of people who are hungry or percent of people uh, who are uh, undernourished. The, the FAO data just says that in case of India, the percent of people who are hungry is around 16%, and it has increased in the last 10 years. This is what as per, as per uh, FAO data. It is not only in India, in many other countries also uh, it has increased. Then we have National Family Health Survey reports, which indicate that uh, more than 50% of uh, 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 lactating women, they are suffering from anemia. 55% of children are anemic. Percent of children who are stunted, who are underweight, is also very high and worst in the South Asia even. So then this raises the question that if we have increased our food production by 50% in last 23 years, and its composition has also moved in favor of that people say that, uh, that carb. So I used to debate with our member uh, uh, health in Niti I hope, that there is no uh, carb, uh, uh, big increase in intake of carb in India because per capita intake of cereal is declining. Okay, but only if you consider potato, then you find slight increase in the carbohydrate uh, intake. Otherwise, it is not that because of excessive intake of carb, uh, we have uh, poor, uh, we have uh, uh, poor health. So then, this is an enigma, and probably uh, we need to look into this aspect. That is it, that composition of our staple food has also changed over time, and that is a factor for poor health of India's population, hunger and undernutrition. And that composition is that millers constituted 
25% of total staple food intake, that is cereal, in the beginning of Green Revolution, if you take four years, 67 to 71, then millers constituted 26% of total cereal consumption in this country. Uh, a recent figure, uh, that is again, uh, as I said, after 11, 12, we don't have figure about uh, consumption, but we have figure on production, which is only 5%. That share of millers from 26% in the beginning of Green Revolution, it has come down just to 5%. And we all know that large part of uh, millers is going as a feed uh, for industrial use. And if you account for that, then you will find that the share of cereal, uh, share of millers in the total staple food intake is not even 3%. Could this be a factor for high incidence of anemia, and other kind of uh, um, children who are uh, underweight, who are um, uh, not gaining uh, adequate height. So is this a reason? This is a question before I would say uh, medical science, but this is uh, apparently what has, uh, uh, what has happened. And we also know that incidence of uh, dieting, incidence of um, uh, overweight uh, women, that is uh, rising at a at a very uh, rapid rate. So this is uh, what uh, happened uh, in the past uh, uh, 40, 50 years that uh, importance of millers um, has uh, reached a level of uh, uh, insignificance. It has reached just uh, in the total food, it will come out to be very, very small. But even if we consider cereal alone, the, the percent is uh, less than uh, uh, 5%, which uh, at one time used to be uh, 25%. How it happened? And if we know how and why it happened, probably we can address it better for the future. To my mind, there are four kind of biases which have worked against millers. The first bias is cultural bias. If you look at culturally, that is the reason we did not give the, our generation give no, did not give this term inferior cereals. That was given by our forefathers. So though we say that our forefather knew best about food, Dadima knew what we had to eat, but if Dadima knew so well, why she did not know about these great qualities of millers? Why we were told in our childhood that, uh, that, uh, that uh, um, rice and wheat are a superior uh, cereal and given the opportunity, don't miss it. If you get opportunity to eat rice and wheat, leave millers, eat this. These are superior uh, cereals. In fact, there used to be proverb. I share with you one proverb which I often used to listen in my state. I come from a farming family in Punjab. That, uh, that was, I will translate it, that... Uh, uh, meaning is that city life is so so good compared to villages that even if you have to face some hardship, better you choose urban life than city, uh, village life. The second was that khaye kanak, kanak is wheat, pame hove jahar. Okay, you prefer to eat wheat even if there is poison in it. So why this cultural vice was there? I think, Tara, if you can get hold of some uh, cultural anthropologists to explain these reasons, that what were these reasons because of which rice and wheat were culturally considered superior and all millets, they were culturally considered uh, inferior. And when guests used to come in our house, we used to prepare wheat, roti, and rice. Otherwise, uh, uh, pure eating pure wheat and rice, it was very rare. Be it mixed with the chana was the kind of thing which we used to <laughs> eat. So one was this cultural bias, uh, uh, which led to uh, discrimination against uh, uh, millers. And we need to know that uh, uh, what was the reason uh, 
uh, because uh, we are now feeling that these are good serial, but who knows that uh, after some time, uh, certain aspects of millets are discovered um, um, as um, uh, after 40 years of uh, increase in intake of wheat, we are discovering this is not uh, um, uh, a very positive change in dietary. So we need to uh, understand that culture reason. Second is uh, technology bias. And uh, again, uh, technology bias, um, uh, one is what is known to everyone. Uh, that is um, that uh, uh, green revolution technology was favorable to rice and wheat. Uh, we didn't have green revolution kind of things uh, in other crops. Uh, even if we developed uh, hybrid like that NGP route developed in case of uh, sorghum, uh, it happened late. The relative gain was not uh, uh, very, very high. So we need to look into this, that why this technological bias, where does it originate? Why India could make big progress in case of rice and wheat, but not in case of other millets? My explanation, many a time people mind it, especially rice and wheat scientists. Uh, uh, my uh, explanation of this is that we in India did not have any indigenous breakthrough in yield in any of the crop except basmati. Whatever breakthrough we have, it came from outside. Okay, you look into how wheat came into India, how rice, modern varieties came into India from Iri, wheat, we know that gene from Japan traveled to Wisconsin, Wisconsin to when Swami Nathanji wrote to Wisconsin University, that professor wrote back that uh, we have a temperate wheat, whether you contact um, Norman Warlock, that wheat which is you produced in Mexico will be used for, for you. So wheat came from, uh, from uh, uh, Mexico. Uh, we have seen cotton revolution, then wheat also came from Monsanto, uh, from, uh, from uh, USA. Like that, if you look at any major breakthrough, it came from outside. But we were good enough to make use of that breakthrough. Since millers were produced largely, I think 80% in Asia and Africa, the possibility of Western world making breakthrough in case of millers was not there. It, it, it was not there with them. They were not bothering about uh, uh, what are these uh, uh, millet kind of things. So I think that is the root cause that uh, why these technological uh, dice happened uh, against millers. And even now, uh, no university, whether Iowa, Ohio, is working on millers. So onus lies on you people that uh, it will not come from outside the way it came. Even now, whatever varieties of wheat we are developing, we know that elite germplasm, those lines, it, they come from so much. They have a big gene bank, global gene bank from there. Uh, they, are, they are coming. But I don't think in case of millet that option is there. So we need to work hard. We need to make indigenous efforts or we need to forge collaboration from our side with the Western world, not from Western side with the, with the world. Even so, I mean, we know that how Illinois University and Rockefeller Foundation, they brought soybean to India. Earlier, it was not uh, white soybean, yellow soybean, it was black soybean. So soybean revolution, that 100 time increase in production, again, it came from there. It was not native to us. And so many examples in case of fruit and vegetable, whether you take papaya, other kind of thing, that you just find that basic breakthrough happened elsewhere, but then it traveled to India, and we made very good use of that. Africa could not uh, make uh, use of that. So we need to address uh, that kind of uh, technological, uh, technological thing. How it was policy wise that uh, MSCP procurement, seed subsidy, R&D spending, they were all highly secured toward uh, 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 rice and wheat, and uh, we were not extending those to uh, millets. Now the awareness about millet has uh, increased, and now there's no need to pay MSC because now market is valuing millets at a price higher than that is MSP. Then fourth was market-wise, which I would say follows largely from the cultural bias, 
that even market was not value quality of millers that the bajra parliament has uh, so much of iron it has highest uh, zinc uh, ragi has highest calcium so market was also not uh, valuing uh, uh, valuing uh, uh, those kind of skills so if we want to promote millers we have to overcome all these biases as we as we as we uh, go along as far as first bias is concerned our prime minister has invested so much of his time and energy i think that thing that dismantled people are now realizing that uh, this was not the right way to treat the millers millers have uh, some uh, some uh, uh, good value so demand has come now from new set of consumer again that demand for millet is not coming from masses in the beginning it is coming from um, educators or elite class those who can uh, who can pay better those who are conscious uh, uh, conscious uh, uh, about their uh, health uh, etc uh, and this will continue if no breakthrough in production happens and let us admit that if we look at the data for even latest four years millet production in this country is not increasing it is declining it is declining even in odisha despite millet mission so if we wanted that millets become commodity for consumption of masses milk become commodities for for countries not for a select sections we have to make breakthrough in their production and when you will make that breakthrough say production start rising at 6 to 7% then we will need that policy support then you will find that price will crash right now it may not because if you look at the behavior of prices whether it is millet or any other commodities there is a kick the demand that up to a point even if you sell wagra at 60 rupees kg some people will buy it for them it doesn't matter how much they are spending on food but if you want large number of consumers also start buying then you have to sharply bring down its price so a kink happen at that level that kink did not so then you would find that we will need things like msp procurement etc but your scientists were asking me in the in the auditorium that if you over produce millets then certainly the intervention in price uh, intervention in uh, procurement uh, uh, etc uh, etc uh, will be uh, required technological bias i already mentioned that uh, you have to work through native germplasm do have to explore what is available in ecinsect gene bank if they share with you um, uh, what is the germplasm available in uh, uh, africa and elsewhere in fact you don't require too many even one gene can make a difference this is how in case of wheat you know better than me that a gene found in japan just one gene made big difference that was the basis for that revolution <laughs> same thing in case of rice a gene found in taiwan was that helpful so you have to make some conscious effort these days we have that genetical tools you can identify uh, you can do genome uh, uh, india has set up ashoka and isri which do genome sequencing uh, kind of thing so big onus uh, lies uh, on 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 you and here again i want to bring back uh, dr uh, ngp rao that i read on the net uh, uh, about his contribution that he also could succeed in sorghum only when he started crossing tropical varieties with temperate varieties you see that importance of germplasm hum kai baar kehte hain hum to kisi se germplasm share nahi karenge we will not share the other will also not share the germplasm with you okay and you never know it is not that if you have one lakh line necessarily you have some desirable gene it is possible that if a person who has only 10 <laughs> line you have a valuable genes huh? and uh, and uh, then uh, that uh, importance of uh, germplasm i suggest you put your scientist to look at it screening etc etc and find out globally global scouting where we can have some uh, germplasm and uh, uh, and uh, 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 explore uh, explore that another possibility 
of uh, increasing production is if we can have uh, more area under uh, under millers. Um, right now, we do not have um, um, uh, any area, and you ask any of uh, scientists, everybody want more and more area under his her crop. Um, I'm speaking in auditorium of Rice Research Institute. They would like area under rice to be increased in this country. Sorghum people would like more area under sorghum. Oil seed people would like more area under under oil seeds. But anyway, they can make that uh, efforts. But we know that. Uh, uh, but matter for area allocation decision is four factors: relative yield, relative price, relative cost of production, which sum up to relative net income. Then relative price risk and relative yield risk. So I think uh, your team also uh, should do all those calculations. There is that break-even point where your crops start uh, becoming at par with uh, other kind of crops. In my slides, I have just looked at uh, 10 crops, how they compare at what uh, point that ratio crossed one <laughs> before one it is disadvantage, when it turned into uh, advantage. So through that, also you need to see, and then you will come out uh, with uh, some number which will show how much challenge you have that either yield increase of 50% or more or price increase of 50% or more will be needed in the millers to have some area from the closest competing crop. But if you can't want to go beyond that, you still require uh, more than that. So it is not only that you are able to increase yield, the yield gain in millets has to be more than what is the yield gain in other places after setting aside the initial disadvantage that you have. So those are the uh, kind of uh, challenges uh, which, uh, uh, which uh, uh, you will face. Uh, some issues uh, relating to uh, future of uh, millets, which uh, I would uh, like to share with you that uh, a lot of awareness is now created. Uh, people now know what are the uh, health uh, uh, benefits. And if we keep increasing this awareness without increasing production, then it is only the existing production which will get redistributed. Hmm? And already there is a interesting uh, slide. I'm not uh, putting it, but I will share that uh, number with you that uh, uh, the, the awareness uh, uh, has uh, uh, increased in the last one decade. But even before that, some awareness was changing, and the consumption number for India for 93, 94, and 11, 12 reveal a very disturbing picture that what happened to consumption of uh, millers in the 20 year between 93 and 2012. Uh, I'm just reading out those numbers. In 93, 94, per capita, per month consumption of millers, in rural area was 1.6 kg. In urban area, it was one third of rural area. Overall, it was 1.34 kg. In after 20 years, the consumption in rural area per person per month declined from 1.6 kg to half kg. In urban area, it declined, but the decline was smaller. It came down from 60 gram to, to uh, 600 gram to 300 gram. Then if I look at a cross income category that you divide society in four classes, bottom, lower middle, upper middle, and top. In 93, the bottom class was consuming 1.6 kg per person per, uh, per month. And the top class, upper 25%, were consuming only 1 kg and 100 gram. 1.6 kg bottom, one and 1 kg and 100 gram at the top. It, after 20 years, the consumption by bottom 24 declined from 1.6 kg to only 270 gram. Only 270 grams. It declined in all cases, but in 201112, per capita consumption became positively correlated with income status, whereas in 93, 94, 
it was inversely related to income status. <laughs> so uh, clear evidence that uh, number one, overall millet intake is declining. Number two, millet are moving away from bottom uh, low income uh, consumer to high income consumers. And if you just look at who need millets more, those who are hardworking, those who are already undernourished, those who are already malnourished. And if you do not succeed in increasing production, then this kind of disquiet trend will become still more disturbing. There could be cultural bias also that poor feel happy that what is this bloody, we were forced to eat bajra and ragi kind of thing. Now we are eating superior cereal, <laughs> rice and wheat. But uh, in terms of uh, nutrition, uh, the way uh, changes are happening, and uh, every year, uh, this uh, uh, decline of uh, 500 gram is, is, is happening in the, in the per capita uh, intake of uh, cereal. So we need to uh, work very, very hard uh, 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 in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, increasing production. Only then we can uh, ensure that uh, uh, millets are getting consumed not only by uh, health conscious um, uh, rich and uh, people with deep pockets, those who have high income, but they are also uh, the, the uh, nutrient for ordinary people. So uh, for that, again, I would say yield growth is uh, very, very uh, important. Another thing is that uh, if we talk about a single millet, the oversellers nutrition value. I took one table from your uh, recipe book, which shows no millet is better in all nutrition compared to rice and wheat. It is better in some nutri nutrition, but not in all nutrition. Therefore, if we want to meet the nutrition goal, it is not that one minute or two minutes will do. You will find that Vajra is highest in um, iron, but uh, sorghum has a very poor uh, iron. Like that, that you need to have some sort of combination of millets. Uh, uh, having one or two minutes uh, doesn't, again, give you the diet which is balanced uh, 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 in terms of uh, nutrition. You are making a lot of uh, recipes. Uh, you showed to me, many other people are also making, there is a person, Satyan Yadav in Noida. He told me he has 200 recipes. He is again and again inviting me to taste and see the, those uh, recipes. But I would say that you make those recipe not by going for classification of standard food that we have made noodles, we have made pasta, we have made cookies, whether you have made some products which is nutritionally far, far superior in all respects compared to uh, wheat, and, uh, wheat and rice. Otherwise, I can give reason why I'm consuming wheat, not sorghum. I can say that wheat contain much higher protein compared to any of the millet other than bajra. So that is the reason I am consuming wheat. Okay, and I consume bajra only in case of winter. So you need to look at the nutrition profile and work on a recipe while keeping nutrition in mind, not necessarily that uh, taste in mind. The third aspect is processed food versus cooked food. Given the scarcity of millets in this country, I still feel that from nutrition angle, if people eat minutes like they eat other cereals, that more as a main food, it could be khichdi, it could be dalia, it could be poha, whatever uh, South, South Indian diet, uh, rather than going for cookies and noodles, etc. Uh, that I think again from a nutrition angle, uh, for the time being, we should promote uh, uh, main uh, dishes uh, which uh, can be prepared from uh, from millers uh, rather than emphasizing too much the processed food. After all, processing improves involves some loss of uh, nutrition. All kind of processing involves some loss of nutrition. Even if when you convert paddy into rice, there is some loss of nutrition. Even when you eat atta, it has less nutrition compared to wheat grain. <laughs> so all kind of processing involve some loss of uh, nutrition. If you have adequate food and you want to push the consumption, 
then emphasis on processing is desirable because then you move from normal demand to creation of demand that you have to create a demand which doesn't exist so but at this stage uh, you have to just uh, think of uh, think of uh, uh, these uh, kind of things and uh, uh, can we think of again uh, even if you are able to double or increase millet production say four times in next 15 20 years its overall percentage in the total cereal will not be very high. Then to take care of quantity size, we still consume rice and wheat. But to take care of nutrition size, we add millet into it. Is it possible to mix so-called nutra cereal and other cereal and then prepare some preparation so that we don't have even uh, quantity uh, constraints? The, the 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 recipe which you are preparing making from the mixture of inferior and superior cereal uh, is slightly better than others uh, because we may not be able to set aside too much of millets uh, for uh, for uh, uh, other kind of uh, other kind of uh, um, uh, uses uh, it will not be uh, very healthy and uh, I also found that. Uh, uh, you are doing a lot of work on uh, processing. If you have adequate number of scientists, you go for it. Otherwise, I feel that uh, if that work can be um, um, given to institute like CIFR, CFTRI, NIFTM, and your scientists work with the Arjun ki I ki tara to produce a variety with more, 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 and more yield. That is the, I would say, main challenge in case of millets. All other things will follow. All other things will follow. So put your maximum energy and resources in increasing productivity of millets. Then you will find that demand is already created. And, uh, and uh, 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 only after later stage uh, we would uh, need. So... As a strategy, I again uh, list four or five, uh, no, not much time, I just mentioned the single-minded focus on increase in yield. Develop water-sponsored varieties of millers which give you higher yield. There is very little scope for area substitution. Explore whether millet can be grown in fallow land, whether millet can be grown as mixed crops. When I was a child, we used to grow kangani in the maize, just it will grow. As a, as a, as a mix, mixed crop, you need to find out uh, those kind of uh, possibility of, uh, of uh, uh, intercropping. Also, uh, supply some easy processing machines which are suitable at, uh, at, uh, uh, at uh, household level. And also see if you can integrate your uh, minute production uh, program with schemes of R&D. R&D has much more resources than Ministry of Agriculture. If you take away that we give as PM Kisan, now the best amount is that. 60,000 go, after that what is left is very small. Compared to that, if you look at budget of R&D for livelihood, it runs into lakhs of crores. So can millet be part of that rural development mission so that people grow it in the backyard, et cetera, et cetera. So I think you need to think of uh, those kind of uh, intervention that even if millet is not grown um, on large area uh, at farm, at least uh, this uh, um, um, uh, superfood uh, is grown by people like they used to grow vegetables and uh, uh, small uh, fruit kind of commodity. So these are some of um, the ideas which <laughs> uh, occurred to me in case of millers. Uh, uh, I'm not sure how uh, correct they are and how much you will uh, uh, agree with me. But I used to uh, point out uh, uh, the change in the direction in which researchers are taking their research many a time. So lastly, I will narrate one incident with you that the way I pointed out to you that in my view, what you should be doing in case of uh, uh, Miller's, uh, there was a presentation by Dr. Prabhu, former joint director of uh, IRI in ICR on what are their achievements in rice. It was an ICR. 
Dr. Mr. Maharishi was uh, ICR secretary. There was a very popular slide with ICR that they had put a very good slide, even a board also in the director of IRI, that Basmati was this much, they break another variety which became half centimeter, then one centimeter, then one and a half centimeter, then two centimeters, and two and a half centimeters. They were just showing that, uh, that picture everywhere. After problem presented, I laughed in a very awkward manner. Mary, she was a no-nonsense person, Ramaraji knows. So he just asked me angrily, Dr. Mason, what made you laugh? Because, sir, I'm wondering when, whether rice scientist will stop converting rice into noodles. <laughs> and Prabhu and his team, they took it seriously that if there is no gain in increasing size of the grain beyond a point, then don't waste your self resources in that. If there is a gain that it gives better price, then you do it. If there is a gain that it gives you better yield, then you do it. Unnecessarily keep enlarging the room beyond preference of the consumer doesn't serve any well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Ramushin, for delivering a thought provoking session. May I request Dr. C. Srinivasra for her remarks? Thank you, Ramesh Ji, and uh, for the really interesting analysis and overall millet production. And uh, I will not repeat what he said, uh, all the points, but uh, starting with uh, highlighting the era of Dr. NGP Rao. Uh, sir, and uh, contributions, and uh, Professor uh, Swaminathan's and uh, BP Paul, Green Revelation, he was uh, highlighting the contest. Coming to that, uh, what we all think that the millets are climate friendly and uh, fodder value is very, very good nutrition. He started with a positive note. And therefore, we all support, ICR support, I am Indian Institute of Millet Research and Millet Scientist. And uh, he has also given me the very, very important uh, six, seven uh, recommendations. Perhaps I will only read those things. Perhaps uh, Dr. Tara will take forward as a uh, as an advisory and uh, suggestive recommendations. One of the important uh, aspect was that uh, he has uh, asked IAMR scientists and all millet scientists of India to work on yield barriers, breakthroughs, so that awareness has been large and the consumers will increase uh, so that uh, you can really balance uh, strong, hardcore research in higher yield uh, varieties and hybrids. Second one is that uh, multi-millet uh, consumption pattern is suggested. As I, we said that we are all proud to say that millets are iron rich, calcium rich, zinc rich, protein, fiber, but all crops are uniform, not uniform, and we compare to rice and wheat basic uh, food. So how to uh, make an integrated combination of millets, that is one point. And uh, uh, perhaps that Tara would take some of the economics and support and production and consumption dynamics, market dynamics, Dr. Tara, uh, you would take this important, if you, you have many economists yourself, you have, but uh, taking that is very, very important. If yield increases millets, what is the price dynamics and via versus with the consumption pattern. So then we can safely push millets, which region, where it is. One of the important uh, aspect, uh, interesting fact, he suggested major breakthroughs in rice, wheat, soya bean came from outside. Since we need to push from India the millets because we are the la larger area in India and perhaps we are consuming. So we need to work towards. And while doing breakthroughs, and always he suggested water sense to uh, mixed cropping, intercrops he suggested. So we will be working with the agronomist and other NRM scientists, how to promote millets as intercrops, mixed crops, and other fallow crops and contingency crops. Then uh, uh, 
then another important uh, aspect he has mentioned that uh, one of the policy you have to foresee that when you are putting pricing is will be the in future uh, then can we sensitize can we push that uh, rice and wheat versus millet perhaps always you recently you you are making presentation to g20 countries and you are also giving suggestion to what extent millet can be consumed while doing so can we put that uh, what are the key attributes of fiber content and uh, protein content calcium iron uh, uh, zinc content can we put the pricing can be taken pair that uh, with based on considering that nutrition value nutrition value um, that point perhaps you may you may think over and uh, overall uh, Pr professor ramachand ji always you have been very analytical and very interesting facts which we don't know and we don't see that angle and complete swot analysis you have presented what are the strengths what are the weaknesses what are the opportunities and the threats for overall millets now in future and forever so for, uh, thank you very much for uh, making us enlightened and the key aspects which you suggested perhaps a part of the research program of indian institute of military research and the overall millet program in india thank you very much thank you sir it's time to confer the ngp our lifetime achievement award for this may i request professor ramesh sham to kindly announce and confer the award I am happy to announce that the Dr. M. G. P. Rao Memorial Lifetime Achievement Award for the biennial year 2023 goes to Dr. A. Nirmala Kumari, former head, Center for Excellence in Milk, PMA. Congratulations to Dr. Nirmala Kumari ji. And uh, I also want to announce that the award includes a citation and a rupees one lakh cash prize. Thank you. I request Madam Madam Kumari and Madam please come to the events. Hi. I request Madam Sri Tarakas Satyadhi to honor the award. I also request. Dr. Srinivas and the staff are not to read the presentation. Thank you, Madam, for giving me this opportunity. To read the citation of Madam Dr. Nirmala Kumari. Dr. Nirmala Kumari, who was born in Iro district of Tamil Nadu on 30th December 1962, is an eminent and pioneer plant breeder with an outstanding contribution in small millets breeding, who has released more than 25 varieties of small millets at the national and state level that are popular in the country and in Tamil Nadu state. Madam has served as the head of the Center of Excellence in Millets of Athyanam, which of TNAU. Madam Dr. Nirmala Kumari has completed her post graduation with specialization in plant breeding and genetics in 1986 and her doctoral degree in biotechnology in 2000 from Tamil Nadu Agriculture University Coimbatore. Her specialization in biometrics, quantitative genetics, heterosis breeding, plant genetic resource management, tissue culture, cell line development, secondary metabolite analysis and farmers participatory breeding. has significantly benefited many students researchers and most importantly the farmers as an expert recombination breeder in small millets she has developed a large number of trait specific cross combinations and shared the material across the country she has maintained documented evaluated and shared more than 4500 small millet germplasm accessions she has trained many scientists on the crossing techniques in small millets From 2003 to 2022, until her retirement on 30th December 2022, as a professor and head from the Center of Excellence on Millets, 
Atyandal TNAU. She has served in All India Coordinated Research Program in Small Millets for 20 years. Throughout her service, she was actively involved in national international schemes, millet seed production and distribution. Madam has guided 15 students as chairperson and to more than 25 students as members. She has published more than 60 research papers in national and internationally peer-reviewed journals and has received many awards, notably TNAU's Best Women Scientist Award and Best Research Award. And during her tenure, the center has received the Best ITAP Small Millet Center Award during 2019 and 2022. Recognizing her human contribution, in improving food and nutritional security in drylands through millet improvement, especially in small millets, the Society of Millets Research, IPAR, Indian Institute of Millets Research, Hyderabad, takes pride in awarding Dr. NGP Rao Memorial Lifetime Achievement Award to Dr. Mrs. Nirmala Kumari Angamuttu on this day of 13th September 2023. Thank you, sir and madam. Thank you, Dr. Srividya. We now request Dr. Nirminakumar Madhu for her remarks. At this time, really, I don't have any words to talk. But uh, first of all, I thank all my team for giving me this opportunity. Next, I thank. Director IIMO and uh, the Society of Surgum for conferring me this award. Uh, they have nominated taking my achievements in account. But this time, I take this opportunity and the award as a motivation and it is really asking me to work still further. So I may not take rest because I was little down after retirement. Though I am doing some of the writing part of work in Millers, but really this one motivated me. And from now onwards, I will work still further because at least when I am working in the um, I could stay more in the university. I have some limitations. At present, there is no limitation. So I will go on work in millets and try to help my scientists, students, as well as my beloved farmers. Uh, this is what I want to assure. Actually, I have to thank all my coordinators, project coordinators. I have worked under five project coordinators. They are all my guru. Uh, from 2003 onwards, I was working under Dr. A. Sitaramji and Krishna Gowda and Dr. Chennabiri Gowda and Dr. Bebahar and Dr. Tulupi sir. And now I am getting the award from Dr. Haravadi Madam. So really it is a very good opportunity. And similarly, I want to thank my Tamil Nadu Agriculture University, which allowed me to work for more than 25 years in this small millet. So people may be thinking, I'm having the patient, 
towards the millet improvement because of the crop, but not so. First, I was more interested on the people, those who are raising the millet. So they only aroused me to work hard in this crop because for the first time under state agriculture university program, I was working with uh, um, multi-location trials at so many tribal villages. So at that time, I was so much interested what they are doing. They are struggling hard with millet crops, but on their face all the time, I saw satisfaction and merriness, and they never thought it is very struggle to work with this crop. So at that time, I was thinking, uh, with these difficulties, how these people are so content and so merrily working with the fields. So that gave me the trust. Uh, you, you have to work something for these people. So definitely millets cannot be replaced from the tribal or hill agriculture. From that time onwards, I was working with this crop. So my first interest was on the tribal farmers and hill farmers, those who are raising the crop. Then only my interest came towards our small millet crops. That's why I was working for a long period in this millet crop. And I was given with opportunity also. And all our scientists, fellow scientists, and my colleague at university have helped me. And I find at least one or two points from every person to learn. And the learning will be always there in my life. At this place, I once again promise and assure I will work still hard for the improvement of our millet crops in one way or other. Thank you each and every person for giving me this opportunity to take this honor. That too, I have to be very much sincere uh, when I read uh, through the work, work of Dr. Rausa and as well as our chapters uh, and the chief guests were telling about his contributions. Really, it is very humble for me um, to receive Dr. Rausa's award, Lifetime Achievement Award. So I will be grateful and ask a justifiable person for receiving this award in future also. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. May I request Dr. Sita Rasapurabu to hand over momento, a token of our respect and appreciation to our chief guest and chairman of the session. Thank you. Thank you. As we have come to the end of the ceremony, we request Dr. Venkatesh Bhatt, Principal Scientist and CR Ayama, to propose the vote of thanks. Uh, as I have said, we are uh, highly grateful to the chief guest, Professor uh, Ramesh Chand of today's uh, function, who accepted our invitation. He rescheduled his travel and accommodated the program 
we chose is uh, affection towards the middle fraternity and the importance she has given to have an interaction on it. We are uh, highly benefited by his uh, enlightening lecture, the periodic uh, macro view of uh, the importance and the uh, evolution of millets in Indian agriculture. And uh, millet opportunities, how you get to do so for your uh, kind gesture as well as lecture. We are uh, extremely grateful to our uh, today's present chairman, Dr. C. H. Srinivasarao, Director now, who amidst this busy schedule, took time to join our program and address the occasion. His uh, unyielding support and cooperation has helped to the better shaping of uh, today's program. We place our gratitude to him on this occasion. Society so for Minute Research and AMR are highly inducted to the jury for the selection of the awardee for uh, NDPR Memorial Western Achievement Award, headed by uh, our chairman, Dr. Sia Srinivas Rao, and the members, Dr. Aram Sundaram, Director Ayala Rao, and Dr. Arjay Mathur, Director Ayala Rao. I have them, they took uh, time to critically examine the nominations and finalize the award. So we thank them for their valuable time and with them in uh, supporting the cause of millets and increase the millet workers. We are uh, highly grateful to the distinguished guests uh, from uh, uh, directors of Kaisari Institutes, uh, delivered from ICRISAT, and uh, the current and the retired uh, uh, senior uh, 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 officers of uh, the OCR as well as University. We thank our scientists, teachers, and scholars from different uh, Asian institutes of Hyderabad, EJT, SCAU, ICRISAT, and uh, industry who have come to attend this function and be with us. We are happy to say that many of our uh, elderly mentors have participated in the meeting online. Besides, our uh, dozen from active centers of MES have also participated online. We thank them heartily. Society for Millet Research and AOMR request for their continued support in the future events as well. We thank all the members of the society and other entities for participating in today's program. We place on record a big thank you for the sponsors of uh, today's program, uh, NGPR Foundation uh, uh, trustees and uh, UPL Adwanta for their contribution as well as support. We are also thankful to Michael and Kulagin companies for their contribution. We wish to thank Director Ayawal and all the officials of the esteemed institute for providing the auditorium with all the facilities for a smooth conduct of today's function. We are uh, highly grateful to Dr. C. Tara Satyavati, Director, for her initiatives, organ guidance, incessant support, and quest for perfection and excellence which is the joining force for today's function. We are uh, highly grateful to you, ma'am. Finally, on behalf of uh, the society and IAMR, I would to thank all the officials of IAMR who have been uh, continuously on the job to make uh, today's function uh, happen. Doctors uh, Dharpala, Srinivas Mahu, Galapati, Amasiddha, Mahalati, Raghavendra Rao, Ramana, Gavali, Ravi Kumar, Ram Babu, Ravunath, Enrique Jurga, Vilas, and all of the uh, officials of IAMR. So, uh, uh, thank you all, Jaheen. Dr. 